Hello and welcome back. I'm Darcy Bits. This is Urza's AI, and we are making the founding of Ixalan's Pirates, our pirate themed set based on Ixalan and the mana cost and card types from Rivals of Ixalan. We only have a few cards left, so let's see if we can get them down as quickly as possible so we can get into some actual gameplay. First, well, we left off at Gilded Angel. Our actual first card is Truth. A three mana white enchantment whenever you cast a white spell. Each opponent loses one life. Hmm, seems pretty reasonable. I don't know what the going rate for that kind of effect is, but if you're in white, you're going to be playing a lot of white spells. Three mana doesn't sound like too much overhead, but I'm not entirely sure if I can assess that appropriately. I'd never make an honest living. Fair enough. That's the truth. Fathom Fleet Swabby is a five mana red there we go. Couldn't get that. Five mana red 2-2 two, two, Ogre Pirate. Fathom Fleet Swabby can't block. Hmm, that's bad. That's just a horrible card. So, this brings us to the reroll rule of this set. The reroll rule is if card fundamentally does not work, we get to reroll it for free. Otherwise, we get one reroll per card. And if we don't like the one re what we have after the reroll, tough luck. This one counts as our reroll. This card does fundamentally work, it's just awful. Sometimes, the wisest thing to do is nothing at all. Kragon Overhaul, Task Captain. Grizzly Tombs is a 5 mana 7-3 Leviathan. It's otherwise vanilla. Ooh, it's like Yargle. Cool, I'm into it. In times of crisis, they know the power of tradition. I like the idea of a big old leviathan. Weird that a leviathan is red, but whatever. Uh, I don't care. Uh, yeah, I'm into it. Weird name, but I just I like big old leviathans. They're they're cool, even if they're vanilla. Love that. Devil's Playground is a land. Okay, we got a non-basic land. Tap add colorless. Tap Devil's Playground deals two damage to you. Um. I like this. This card's cool. Um, Versailles is not amazing at making lands, so you take what you can get, but also, yeah, it's just bad to start, right? It is. Making colorless instead of making uh, a normal color of land, which, I mean, I guess if you're, like, in a set with a waste or something, then it's not actually, like, worse than a basic, quote-unquote, but the situational upside of dealing damage to yourself is just cool. I'm into things that are like, yeah, normally this is a bad thing, but it's not like you're turning a cost into a benefit. Instead, a deck that uses this will use it, and a deck that doesn't use this doesn't use it. I think that's fun. It's monstrous fauna and a vile taint spurred more curious minds to take up arms against it. Hmm. That makes sense. Captain Folsom! Oh, but they're not actually legendary. That's a shame. Captain Folsom is a 3-mana blue and red 3-2 Minotaur Warrior. They're not even a pirate? Aw. Captain Folsom's power and toughness are each equal to the number of pirate tokens you control. I don't know if there's any pirate token generation in the set, but I like it. It's a cool idea. Kind of an unnecessary drawback of being tokens instead of just pirates, but whatever. Captain Folsom attacks each combat of Fable. Whenever you cast a pirate spell, draw a card. I mean, it's kind of cool. It, I wish it wasn't pirate tokens, and I wish this was a pirate, so it would be like a minimum of a 1-1. One, one. Uh, it's always weird when it has a defined stat and then, a, then an ability to find stat block as well, like conflicting with each other, but whatever. Uh, and then he casts a pirate cross card. I'm into this. Except for I don't really like that restriction. If I was to, like, use this card as inspiration for a card, definitely I would just make it a Minotaur Pirate and have it just be number of pirates you control. Boom. Simple. Easy change. And I think probably pretty good. I don't know. Maybe that's even too strong. I don't know with three mana what the going rate for, um, you know, ability to find stats should be and stuff. But either way... That's not how it works. Uh, do I want to keep it? I guess is the real question. If there's no pirate tokens, this just enters the battlefield and dies. Because it has no minimum, right? It's not one plus the number of tokens you have or anything. And attacking each combat enable is a downside. And then casting a pirate spell or draw a card. I like a pirate synergy. 
I think we can do better, and I'm going to regret this probably, but let's re-roll it. There are a hundred pirates here. You can only make it through one at a time. Abu Muhammad. Okay. Come on. Give me something better. Or just get stuck, I guess. Oh, no, there it goes. Okay. Spark Mage Siren. Okay, that's cool. Is a three mana, one, three, blue and red Siren. It has flying. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Spark Mage Siren gets plus two, plus oh until on a turn. This is cool. It's a very cool card. If you're in a Spell Slinger deck, you're probably casting like two spells a turn anyway. So that makes this a three mana, you know, five, three with flying. That's pretty good. But only really on the turns that you're going to be casting the spells and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't block super well. Stuff like that. No, it's a cool, it's a cool design. I like it a lot. Her eyes flash blue and her voice sounds like the wind rushing through an old mine. That is... I kind of love that. Like, it's not what you'd expect it to sound like. An old mine. That's a weird pull. But any sort of description that is oddly specific it just feels like uncanny and eerie and it's like i don't really know exactly what that means but the fact that you chose those words feels like it implies something bigger mm, that's really really good really really good yeah no i'm happy about re-rolling that shame we got less pirate synergy but still that card probably wasn't playable cabal chemist is a two mana one one red creature human artificer it has haste at the beginning of your upkeep you may put a number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield equal to your devotion to red um excuse me wow um Wow. Is this the most... Wow. I mean, it is a 1-1, one, one, so it's not too hard to remove, right? Like, it dies to anything. But, if you don't remove it, it's a minimum of put a creature card from your hand on the battlefield. Because it already has one red pip. If you don't know Devotion, Devotion is the number of red symbols in mana cost of permanence you control weird mechanic but cool um yeah i think i have to re-roll this that sucks that's such a cool card but wow is that strong salt marsh jackal is a two mana two two red human pirate for three mana and sacrifice salt marsh jackal target player discards two cards I like it! Okay, it's a little bear, it's a 2-mana two 2-2, two -two, and it's a pirate, so it matters for our synergy purposes of the rest of the set, and it has the upside of you can kill it by spending 3-mana to make a player discard 2. 2 is a lot of cards, that could actually be worth it. I'm not really sure what the going rate for, for discard effects are, I've always been kind of bad at assessing the value of discard, but that seems pretty good. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm starting to think I'll be dead before we reach port. Ooh. I mean, we are going to sacrifice you, so I, fair enough. Speaking of port, hey, look at that. Haven Port is a four mana, blue and red, legendary enchantment land layer. So, what does this mean? For this set, because Rivals of Ixalan has these legendary enchantments that flip over into legendary lands, we decided to be a little cheeky with it and combine them since we can't actually do flip cards in this set. For this, this means it has a mana value of 4, but it's a land so you can play it for free. But it does take up your land slot. You can't, you're not allowed to cast it. You're not allowed to... Yeah. Anyway, normal stuff. It has the ability to tap, add blue, or red. Which, while decently strong, you know, it's it comes into play untapped and it provides two colors. That's pretty good. But it's also pretty boring. So I think I'm going to re-roll this and... Oh, I... I, I have a feeling I'm going to regret this, but I'm doing it anyway. One mage should watch Havenport. Another should be standing watch at the bottom of the pit. I do like Havenport, like, as, like, it sounds like a really good legendary land. Oh, well. We can do better. Den of Witches is a four mana blue and red legendary enchantment land. Tap. Add blue and red. Spend this mana only to cast a wizard spell. Okay. That's cool. That's more interesting. 
Yeah, all right. I do wish it was like a wizard or warlock spell or something, because witches are... If it said wizard, warlock, or shaman spell, it would be a great, like, den of witches. Yeah, it's a lamb, but it's also an enchantment because there's magic going on around. I'm into it. This is flavorfully strong, except it should say wizard, warlock, or shaman. Because witches are not their own creature type. Instead, they are sometimes shamans, sometimes they're wizards, and sometimes they're warlocks. I think sometimes they're even clerics. I could be wrong about that one. I'll have to double check. But... Yeah, witches are cool. They can be kind of whatever type they need to be. Having them all be wizards is a little bit weird, but eh. It's still a very cool, flavorful card. Very powerful card if you can satisfy that condition. I don't know how many wizards there are in this set specifically, but no, I like it a lot. A den of hideous goblins who hide beneath the earth to sneak up on unsuspecting prey. That doesn't sound like what den of witches is, but whatever. It's fine. Raid on the Museum is a... Six mana, green, sorcery. Destroy target artifact or land. You gain one life for each artifact and land destroyed this way. So, so one. Weird way of saying that, but okay. Um, I think this is boring. I don't know, like, it's a little bit flexible in that, hey, I want to run artifact removal in my deck, but I don't want to have a dead card in my hand if my opponent's not playing artifacts. Well, this can also destroy a land. The cost is, um, it costs six mana, and you don't want to be paying that much for artifact removal, so... Eh? Um, I, I did already leave one land destruction in the set, I think. I can't remember how much it costs. I think it was four mana. I think it was four mana. So this feels, this feels like a lot. I think we're doing another reroll. We were trying to be fast today. Oh, well. The crew quickly spent spirited away all of the prize pieces of antiquity, even before the police had arrived. That's the time to do it. Azorius's Blessing is a 6-mana green sorcery. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature, gains haste until end of turn. Wow, I don't know what the going rate for a threaten effect these are called threatens in magic where you say you work for me for one turn then you get to go back to your controller um usually you like sacrifice them or something while you have control of them stuff like that um if this card just straight up like stole it permanently i would be happy with that six mana steal something is i think works i think that works perfectly fine Eh, gain control of target creature till end of turn, untap it against haste. I mean, it's too late. That was our that was our one reroll. Like, we don't get to change our mind or anything. But, mm, not great. From that sacred site, a prophecy was spoken, and our entire fleet was placed at the forefront of the prophecy. Sauron Markov Azorius Seneschal. Huh. Zyzos Drogue, maybe, is a 3-mana colorless artifact. Tap, add black or red. For 2 generic, black and red, and tap, target player mills X cards where X is the number of attacking creatures they control. That is so weird. I, I kind of love this. So it's a three mana mana rock, which I, I think generally speaking, people agree that like you really want to be spending two mana on your mana rocks, but it's not bad. Three mana is definitely a printable, even if it might not be a playable um, mana rock. So I think that's perfectly reasonable. Makes two colors. Great. For four mana and tapping it, you can mill somebody. And milling has a variety of uses. The fact that you can mill yourself if you want to, because it's target player, not target opponent, is relevant. So you attack with like a bunch of things, you mill yourself for the equal number of that amount. That's kind of cool. Or if you want to build your opponent, I guess you could try and do that. I think that seems unlikely to work, but whatever. I've never really seen the mill deck like take off before, so I really don't know what is good enough in a mill deck, but whatever. But I don't know, four mana? To mill X, unless you have some really good vet, like use case of that mill, that's kind of expensive. But it's a cool trigger for it. The fact that it's like based on attacking creatures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the heart, Zalfirin Outfitters is an... an what? 
At its heart, Zalfirin Outfitters is an antidote. I kind of like this card, but I also feel like there's something cooler down there. The thing is, this is the whole point of you only get one reroll, is that I don't go digging forever. If I dig once, I'm stuck with that. But also, if I... It's supposed to make me hesitant. Don't give up something actually kind of decent at the chance of getting something ridiculous. All right, I'm going to move on. We are moving on as soon as my mouse cooperates. There we go. Kirk Clan Iron Fist is a 2-mana red 1-1 one, one Goblin Pirate. Love Goblin Pirates. It has Menace. This creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. And Generic and Red Kirk Clan Iron Fist gets plus 1, plus 0 oh, until end of turn. So very expensive Fire Breathing. But they have Menace. Is that worth it? Maybe? I feel like this is just kind of a nice body. Like, I don't want to pass this up because... You, you you need some pirates. If you're going to make a pirate-themed set, it's got to have pirates in it. This is a completely decent pirate. There's no guarantee we'll get a pirate if we re-roll this. And, like, 2 mana 1 one Menace is like, it's not a, you're, like, excited about it, but it's fine. It's fine. And then, you know, if you happen to have some mana open, you can, you can, you know, you can't really sink it, but whatever. You can use it. To shatter, a goblin has to let its rage run its course. It has to keep shooting, keep dodging, keep blocking. Eventually, the rage gives way to the desire for blood. Wow. Sky Shroud Adept is a 5 mana 2 3 white human artificer. Whenever Sky Shroud Adept attacks, tap target creature and opponent controls. This is not good enough. I mean, the tap down effect is good, but. As a 5 mana 2 3, I don't know. Honestly, I kind of like the tap down effect. Like, it's such a simple effect. I could definitely see that being like, like an evergreen keyword, you know, like a keyworded style thing where it's like, oh, this thing has flying, this thing has menace, this thing has when this attacks, tap down one of your opponent's creatures, right? Like, or even just like target creature can't block this turn or whatever, right? Like, that could very easily be just a keyworded effect that you see printed all the time as, just, as a generic evasion effect. It's kind of like Menace, where you need sort of an extra body to block it, except for you're actually only blocking one body. That could be fun. But not on a 5-mana 2-3. I'm going to roll this one. Here in the Tangle, everyone tries to figure out the best way to give a fellow brother and sister a hand up. If that's the case, then my masters are working on the best way to do it to you. Give me a pirate. Okay, that'll do. Pain Claw Researcher is a 5-mana, 3-5 human artificer with vigilance. At the beginning of your end step, you gain 2 life for each creature card in your graveyard. Oh, wow, that could actually be really strong. Wow. I kind of like that. That feels, like, weirdly white in a very odd way, in that, like, it's a very powerful effect, it's a healing effect, but because you're white, yes, you'll have, like, you might have, like, a bunch of, like, white weenies that died and went to the graveyard, but you're probably not going to, like, be milling yourself. You're probably not going to be doing any, like, ways of filling your graveyard intentionally. You might have some. Don't get me wrong. Like, you can always play multiple colors. But I don't know. I think that's actually kind of a cool a cool use of, like, it, I don't know. It just feels white to me. I, I like it. As opposed to, like, black might be, like, you know, drain your opponent for one, deal one damage to them, heal one damage, stuff like that. Yeah. Blue might be, like, draw a card. Yeah. No, I like it. I like it a lot. Look at what I've learned. The scarier, the better. Beautiful little card. Hey, now we got a pirate. Wild Lackey is a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two white human pirate. As long as you control a pirate... I do wish the AI would do this less. This is like one of the AI's quirks that I quite dislike. Just, hey, as long as you do a thing which this card itself satisfies. As long as you just, if you just said another, just as long as you control another pirate. Cool little, cool little card. Anyway, as long as you control a pirate, Wild Lackey gets plus one, plus one, has first strike. This is a two mana, three, three with first strike. I, I mean, I don't think that's the most broken thing we've kept. I think I'll keep it, but wow, is that just an auto include in any white deck? That's, ah. 
A captain can choose not to follow orders and make a few waves of their own. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. It's really good, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. A lot of white has, like, double strike and stuff, so I guess... I wonder what... what, what... Maybe that style line exists. I, I couldn't be sure. Hellhole Harbor Defense Force. That was a weird way of saying defense, but okay. Is a 3-mana, three 3-1 three, red goblin. It's vanilla. We can do better. At the first hint of trouble... It took the other goblins' hearts to hear the humans' war cries. Humans' is... Yeah, we can try that again. Keening Raiders is a 3-mana, 1-2 red goblin. It has tap, add red or white. And it also has, for white, white, and tap, Keening Raiders deals 1 damage to any target. Okay, interesting. Three mana, one, two, not great. Taps for red or white, kind of cool. It's, like, more expensive than you want to pay for a um, for a mana dork, but it's not, like, a green mana dork, so, like, the fact that you can play it in other colors is relevant. For two mana and tap, you can ping. Sometimes that's all you need, you know, if you have, like, a one-one thing. And just gotta kill your one-one. I'll pay the two mana and tap it, sure. Yeah, I can see that. You gotta remember that since this could tap for mana... Anytime you tap it for something other than mana, you're effectively costing you a mana to do that. So, you know, um, weird way that you evaluate stuff like that. But yeah, it's kind of like a three mana tap, but whatever. Every secret spot is watched by eyes. Every foothold is held by hands. Black River Mine is a... Oh, right, this is our basic land. Again... Uh, if you watched the previous videos, you know I left in the basic lands when I made the JSON. Apologies, but we'll read it anyway. These are not part of the actual set. We're not going to include them in the final, you know, tally of cards. But whatever. Black River Mine is a basic land. Black River Mine enters the battlefield tapped. Tap, add, black, or red. Perfectly reasonable little card. Just an actual real thing, except for the fact that it has basic on there. Cool. As every surf remembers, it's much safer to hide from a foundry's forge fire than a galley's bilge water. Huh. Okay. Cowed Camel Herds, that's a very funny name, is a three mana two two green elephant. Um a lot of mixed stuff going on here. Cowed, camel herds, elephant. Alright. At the beginning of your end step, if you control a commander, you may pay. Two. If you do, draw a card. I'm gonna re-roll this. Um, it's not terrible. Like, a three mana two-two that you can spend two every turn to draw a card if you're playing Commander and you have yours in play. There's something there, but it's not that interesting. We're not gonna be playing Commander with this set anyway. Uh, I'm not, it's not, not, it's not unfunctional. I'm not gonna just get myself a free re-roll because Commanders are mentioned or anything, but, eh, whatever. I'm not excited enough about it to keep it. Like old chieftains before them, their herds often moved to avoid the notice of rival raiders. Makes sense. Treefolk Huskarl is a 3-mana 2-2 two, two green plant. When Treefolk Huskarl enters the battlefield, put a plus-one plus encounter on target creature you control. Cool! So this is, at minimum, a 3-mana three 3-3, three, three, which is not great, but it's not bad. And then you instead could move that counter somewhere else instead. If you'd rather, you know, buff your, you know, 2-2 two, two double striker or whatever. And you're like, hey, great. That, that, that's more value. Synergy, right? Like, yeah, sure. Not terrible. It is interesting that its name is Treefolk Haskarl, like, and it's not a Treefolk. Which implies to me that it's like... It's almost like Tree Folk's assistant, right? Like, this this is a plant that works with Tree Folk, but is not inherently a Tree Folk itself. What is it? I don't know. Plant is a generic term, but then, then we have Tree Folk, which are specific, and then we've got, like, Dryads, which are specific, and then we got Saprolings, which are another thing, and then it's Fungus is also a thing that's separate from plants, which is fair. Fungus are not the same thing as plants, but, like, a lot of stuff going on there, and I'm not saying it is too... Disparate. There's. A, I'm just saying, of all those disparate things, plant is the most general. 
Anyway, in the tangled wilderness of Elspeth's territory, you will find those who have fled the last city and hidden from its unearthly eye. Great. I don't know what Haskarl is, though. Merfolk Treasure Hunter is a 2 mana 1 1 blue Merfolk Wizard. Hey, wizards! When Merfolk Treasure Hunter enters the battlefield, draw a card. This card is not special, but it is fine. Um, yeah, I mean, 2 mana 1 1 draw a card. It's not super exciting, but you can block something with it and it drew you a card. Great. There's probably a better rate for the same effect, but. I'll take it. The first permanent merfolk to join the court of Took. One with her personal touch. Squirrel Avenger is a 5 mana 2 3 white human artificer. Whenever Squirrel Avenger or another creature you control dies, you may pay white. If you do, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. This card kind of works. Like, it's weird that they're a human artificer who avenges squirrels, and it's like, what are you even doing in vengeance for these squirrels? Well, I'm... I'm making things with my artificer knowledge. <laughs> I'm recovering things from the graveyard. That's what I'm doing. How is that vengeance? Don't worry about it. This card would be really interesting if, like, this is the kind of card I could imagine in a set. They print, like, a really good, like, squirrel token generation in white. Or maybe not even in white, but, like, in a, like, a green-white intended set or something. So you make a bunch of squirrels and they die. And then also has, like, artifacts involved and you pull them back, and those artifacts have something to do with, like, maybe it's like, I don't know, if a squirrel entered the bat, like, graveyard this turn or something, then you can do something with your artifact, like, I could see a little, like, package of cards that were made with the intent of synergizing, where it explains why this is Squirrel Avenger. When Gilded Elder entered Ixalan's service, she assumed the role of protector for her home, although not without challenge. Yeah, that's a decent point, though. I hadn't really considered how Squirrel Avenger doesn't really work that well with, you know, the pirate theme, but whatever. Gilded Elder. Hmm. Uh, I like it. I think 5 mana is kind of expensive, but eh, I'll take it. Serene Scourge is a 5-mana, 2-5, green fish. When Serene Scourge enters the battlefield, target opponent loses 3 life and you gain 3 life. Hmm, I do love a fish, but is a 5-mana, 2-5 reasonable with this effect? Seems expensive. It's an okay blocker, but you can get cheaper ones. The draining for 3. 3 is a decent amount of damage. Like, that's not shabby. I kind of sometimes undervalue how powerful just doing damage to your opponent is like if you're in a normal game 20 life i mean three is like what more than a seventh of that it's not bad it's not bad you know i'm gonna keep it i think i could do worse Usually I say I think I could do better, but in this case I'm going to say I think I could do worse. It is difficult to measure the death of a body. Some become so much energy that the river is shaken. Ooh, there's some interesting flavor going on there, though. I want to know more about the Serene Scourge. Rafik the Lucky is a 6-mana, 4-3, black, legendary creature, vampire, rogue. Alright, tell me about Rafik. They have haste. Rafik the Lucky enters the battlefield with X plus and plus and counters on it. When Rafik the Lucky dies, draw X cards. Interesting. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about X. Previously, I've discussed, hey, X isn't defined. So we get to reroll this. The card doesn't function. But I'm not 100% sure if that's true anymore, right? Like... I've looked at some cards that will not ever define X. It's not in the mana cost, and it's not in the... It's not a, you know, where X is blank. It's simply that you have to be consistent when choosing X. Uh, for example, there's a card that's like, um, 
you know, exile target creature with mana value X, draw X cards. And so all it is is like, well, you've, you've targeted a creature with, with mana value three, so you're drawing three cards, right? X is consistent, but it was never defined. You just wouldn't have been allowed to target something if it wasn't three. If you, basically, you just decided what it was at the time of casting, and then you had to be commit to it for the rest of the game, um, which I don't know if that actually works, especially with this effect here, because it is vague, right? It, it's, um, because it's over multiple turns, right? Where the difference with my previous example, where it's like a sorcery or an instant or something, that all resolves all at once. But here, if you said, I'm going to define that X is 10. And then when it dies, I draw and draw 10 cards. I'll say, well, how do we know that you said 10? Like, we could simply remember. But Magic is not a game that wants you to remember things. If it wants you to remember something, it'll say something like, note X, or whatever, right? So I think this card probably still falls in the camp of a free reroll, because it doesn't function. But... Imagine if this just said any number of plus one plus one counters on it, and then when it dies, you know, draw for, per counter. How broken is that? I mean, pretty broken, especially with haste. Yeah, no, that's super broken. You just say, you have no blockers? Cool, I cast this, and they name a million, and then even though if it died, I would mill myself, it's not going to die, and then I kill you because the yeah, eye has haste. So... I'm going to count it as a free reroll, but I, I am super interested in, it. like, making AI cards, or at least generating AI cards, I'm not making it. I don't need to get into that debate right now. But it's really made me look at, like, what actually is allowed on a card. Like, just today I was looking at an instant card that has an activated ability on it. Like, that's something that AI would come up with, and yet there's a, there are real cards that are instants that have activated abilities. And it's just like, what? That's a thing you can do? And apparently, yeah, it is. They just have to be like, in the text say, this ability can be activated while this spell is on the stack. And then suddenly you're allowed to have an activated ability on a card. It's super interesting. Not the point. Anyway, Rafiq, you seem very cool. Unfortunately, if there's one place where a former Marauder could have avoided becoming a total loss, it's the harbor. Of his hometown. Hmm. It's very sad. But let's see some other legendaries. What could we have instead? Tel Jalad Swashbuckler is a six mana three three. Wow, that's not great. Legendary creature human pirate. They're a pirate, which is nice. Discard a card, regenerate. I kind of do like discard as a payment for regenerating. That's fun. Regenerate is a decently powerful effect sometimes you care about discarding cards so it's a free discard outlet that's all cool but it's a three three we can do better this one is not free though we are stuck with whatever comes up next it's no wonder we left our boats in ixalan these waterways are alive with the things we most despise Lathar Royal Caster is a 6-mana, six 6-5 six legendary creature demon. Ooh. Vigilance. Whenever Lathar Royal Caster attacks, untap all lands you control. Holy crap. Whenever a land is tapped for mana, Lathar deals 1 damage to any target. Oh, this card is really good. Wow. So, I mean, it's worth saying, you know, you spend six mana, you play a six, five, it doesn't have, doesn't really do anything the turn it comes into play unless you have extra mana and then you maybe ping something a couple times. Still very strong. If you untap with it, however, it can attack to untap all of your land. So if you spend all your mana and then in your second main phase, you can then spend all that mana again. Very powerful. When you tap your lands for mana, you are pinging. So you just say, I tap all of my lands, pinging my opponent's board down. They have no blockers. I attack with a 6-5. I untap all my lands. Also, my guy doesn't even, like, tap because they have Vigilance, so they're going to be ready for This card is so good. Now, is it actually too good? 
I don't know. Like, the more I look at magic, the more I realize I can't assess a card. This might be actually printable. Like, have you seen the, like, Phyrexian Annihilator and Phyrexian, was it, Vindicator or something? Those cards are busted. And yet, like, pfft, pfft, they're, they're, those are allowed. I don't know. This might be totally fine. I don't know. Uh, I like it, and it's strong. Lothar believes he is merely the instigator of the terror he unleashes, not the main culprit. Let us be sure, Elspeth. All right, I'm into whoever Lothar is. Lothar Royalcaster seems cool. I want to draw this guy. This guy's rad. Oh, no, 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 no. Battle Mage's Map is a six-mana colorless legendary artifact. For three mana and tap, draw a card. If you control a pirate, draw two cards instead. This card's not good enough. <laughs> I mean, three mana repeatedly draw two cards is very strong. Do not get me wrong. But six mana overhead, is it worth it? Is it worth it? I mean, maybe. It, this honestly might be worth it. I don't know. I don't know. It's, six mana seems like so much. But it is a pirate synergy. I don't know. And if you're at the end of the game and you're just top decking, you're like, I've got 10 lands and I'm not doing anything with them, you're going to be happy to be able to drop a six mana thing, immediately tap it and draw two land, two cards. Cool. You know what? I'm going to keep it. We could do worse. It's interesting. We I don't know if it's powerful enough to play. This is the kind of card that if I opened in real magic, I'd go, ooh, I want to try and make this work. And it, it doesn't. But, like, you know what? That's okay. No two spells... No two spellcasters were meant to work together. I don't know. I hit my mouse on accident. It all scrolled around. Let's continue. Viscerid Arsonists is a 3-mana 2-3 green orc pirate. It has first strike. It has haste. Other pirates you control get plus 1, plus 1. Other pirates you control get plus one plus one as long as you control a pirate or an orc. This is a three mana, two three, first strike, and a haste creature that gives all of your pirates, except for itself, which is good, it would be really strong otherwise, um, plus two plus two. That's really good. That's really good right there. I'm going to allow it, and I'm going to regret it later. Once there was a settlement where everyone went insane. Soon, there were just the insane left. That makes sense. Talia, first mate. Resolute Justice is a two-mana green sorcery. Destroy target non-land permanent. Okay. Sure. It's a two-mana kill spell. It hits any non-land permanent. And it's okay. Actually, that's really strong. Now that I say that out loud, I kind of forgot it didn't hit only creatures. This card's busted. I'll allow it. We could use some removal in the set, and there's some really powerful things. Having some really cheap removal is probably not the end of the world. Those who cross Zendikar do not return. Those who try to bring Zendikar's past back to life will meet their demise. Edelise Sojourner in Welcome to the Wait. The Waking World. Don't know why I stumbled on that. Thieves Guilds is a two-mana red enchantment aura. Weird that it would be an enchantment aura, but okay. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus oh, and has tap, add one mana of any color. Huh! Build your own mana dork. Is it good enough? Probably not. Like, because if you enchanted like a, like a, like a one... Man, I guess if you, like, made a bunch of tokens and then you enchanted one of your tokens, then, like, it's this is, like, 2.5 mana for, uh, like, a like a mana dork, but it's still not very good. I'm gonna re-roll this. Guilds and crews throughout the galaxy. Galaxy? Needed a reliable, fast way to deliver important cargo and information. The guilds ado adapted by putting sentries in high places. 
providing a safety net. I do want to try making like a sci-fi set. It's like, we got AI magic. Let's, let's like, let's go places that we're not otherwise going to go. I don't know if I could make the AI actually do it though. It might be like, oh, you want me to make an astronaut? Cool. This is a pirate captain who is got definitely a boat in the water. And it's like, why do you have to specify that it's in the water? Come on. Um, they could have been a space pirate. Space pirate, space. Yeah. Oh, I want to do a space pirate set. You just did a pirate set. You can do another pirate set immediately. Yes, I can. We're re-rolling this card. Dungeons of Dreadmore. Is that real? That sounds so familiar. Is that like a... That sounds like... That's, that's so familiar. Is a two-mana red enchantment. When Dungeons of Dreadmore enters the battlefield, you get energy, energy. Pay... One energy. That's a weird way of wording it, but I'll allow it. Create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. So this is effectively a 2-mana create 2 two twos. That's really good. And then if you have anything else that generates energy, this is a really, really powerful sink for that energy. Not that you need sinks because your energy doesn't go away, but you understand. Wow. That's really powerful. That was already a reroll, right? That was the reroll? Yeah, okay, great. I don't have to even feel bad about keeping this one. At Ixalan's height, fear could barely hold back the masses. That's that's great. I love that. Raining Jabberwock hmm. is a two mana, two two red goblin pirate. Pirate action! <gasps> they have a keyword! Reminder text for pirate action is whenever this creature attacks, you may have target opponent discard a card at random. If you do, draw a card. I love pirate action. Oh, we should definitely print a series of pirates with the keyword pirate action. That's a great, that's a great keyword. You there, discard a card at random. And then I get to draw one. That's so good. Uh, for your three mana, Raining Jabberwock gets plus two, plus zero oh until end of turn. This card is so good. Love this card. From daybreak to dusk, I hear the greed of the guild from gain. What? I keep the greed of the guild from gaining too much ground. Now, greed, 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 greed. Bird of Tomorrow. I hope this card's good. Bird of Tomorrow is a 2-mana, 1-2 blue bird with flying. For generic and blue, regenerate Bird of Tomorrow. I love the name. Bird of Tomorrow is such a good name. And this isn't it. That's so disappointing. Okay, how bad is this? 2-mana, 1-2 with flying. That's, like, fine. Then you can regenerate it. I guess if you could, like load this up like if you could give it equipment or like auras or something you're gonna be really happy to have that regenerated and it's a flyer and it's not that expensive of a flyer but like eh. once they're born the avian men never go hungry i think i'm gonna re-roll this like it's not so much that this card is awful it's that Bird of Tomorrow with such a cool name that this design doesn't deserve it. That's a stupid reason, but I'm sticking to it. Woodwose Stalker is a 2-mana, two 2-1 two blue fairy rogue. For generic and blue, tap target creature. Daybound! When Woodwose Stalker enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a forest card. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Um, okay. So Daybound is an ability word. Maybe it's a keyword. I'm not entirely sure in real magic if it is or not. Either way, even though this doesn't line up with what we expect Daybound to read, that's fine. It doesn't have any inherent rules, so it's not breaking any rules. For the purposes of this card, Daybound means... When Wood Woe's Stalker enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a forest card reveal, put it into your hand, and shuffle. And how good is that? If this had flying, it'd be really good. Otherwise, it's a two mana, two one. It can tap things down. It gives you a, like a card when it enters the battlefield. It's not terrible. I think you could afford to be a two two or have flying. One of those two. Either way, pretty okay. 
Druids and wanderers from across the multiverse find solace among the trees. Aki, Kelpie Wanderer. Decimator of Obedience. Okay. Is a 3 mana, 3 1 black human pirate. It has flying. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1 1 black Phyrexian pirate creature token with flying. Oh my. This is cool. Hey, it's those pirate tokens we were talking about earlier. Wow. Instant or sorcery, make a 1 1. They have flying. This card's great. Decimator of Obedience. What did you do, Decimator of Obedience? He rots them from the inside out. Oh my. Sigiled Engineer is a 5-mana white 2-2 two, two dwarf artificer. Whenever Sigiled Engineer attacks, create a treasure token. Whew. Uh, let's just double check the reminder text. It's an artifact with tap. Sacrifice this artifact. Add one mana of any color. Good. Five man, like, like first of all, just a two two that attacks to make a treasure token. That's pretty good. It is risking its life. Like you can't attack willy nilly. Your opponent will just block it if it's got a three three. So it's not as powerful as making it a treasure every turn. And even then, okay, how much would I pay for that card? I don't know. I just I don't think it's five. Five seems like a lot. It's a cool effect, but it seems like a lot. Because by the time you're at turn 5, you probably can't actually get any attacks in. Unless you can get this like unblockable or something. I don't know. I'm going to re-roll this. I don't know if this, this card's not necessarily too weak or too strong or too even too boring. It's like kind of an interesting design. I just think it doesn't really fit, I guess. I think we can do better. I could see this being a cool pirate, and I want to see that. Everything we make is designed to blow itself up. The purpose of our labor is to fulfill our own glorious death. Okay, that's that sounds like a fun, like, dwarf artificer lore. Wall of Lost Goods. But it's not even a wall! Wall of Lost Goods is a 5-mana, white, 3-3 three, three human pirate with raid. When Wall of Lost Goods enters the battlefield, return up to one target artifact or enchantment to its owner's hand. Okay. So I think the other card was more interesting, first and foremost. Don't know if it actually was better than this, because, again, of the whole, like, you can't really attack reliably when you're a 2-2 on turn 5, but whatever. This is not terrible. It's 5 mana 3-3 that bounces something. Not good, but not bad. Like, it's fine. It's just, meh. Eh. But either way, we're stuck with it, and it's a pirate, which is cool. It is worth mentioning, Raid is a real ability word, just like we saw with Daybound. For the purposes of this card, we're ignoring what Raid is supposed to mean. Also, it's an ability word, so it doesn't have inherent rules, right? It simply identifies that we're using the Raid mechanic now. In this case, we're not using the Raid mechanic, but we're ignoring that. Um, this is something I've seen on a lot of cards. For some reason, the AI loves to make pirates with raid that don't actually match the raid design and i love it i think it's great i'm so glad it encourages cool design from the ai which is one of the reasons why i wanted to do this in the first place it's not an amazing design but you know bouncing stuff is relevant it hits artifacts and enchantments that could really mess somebody up if it hit just any non-land permanent i think this card would be pretty good in its current state it's fine the wooden beams creaked and moan in the dawn wind, signaling the building's imminent collapse. No Narwhal! What? <laughs> no Narwhal is a one-mana colorless artifact. Whenever a player casts a creature spell, you draw a card. Tap, add one mana of any color. This card is busted! What? This card is great. It's a one mana. The taps for one mana. That's already good. We already talked about mana rocks earlier. It's not a three mana that taps for red or black. It's a one mana that taps for anything. Mwah. 
Also, though, when a player casts a creature spell, you draw a card. It's any player. It's not even, like, only your opponents. Like, if you cast creatures, you also get to draw a card. This card is busted. And the question I have to ask myself is, is it too busted? This is too bu if, if we were playing, like, real magic, and uh, the idea was to get it as close to real magic's power level as possible, 100%, this card gets rerolled. It's just, it's not appropriate, right? Like, there's some things that aren't really necessarily, like, too strong, but because of established precedent, they're, like, not appropriate, if that makes sense. I don't even know, it probably is too strong. But, it's like, I don't know. When any time thing that's not, like, win the game strong, I feel like isn't too strong to my to my silly little noob brain. It's just we can do so much worse. And I don't mean worse as in, like, a worse card. Of course it's going to be a worse card because this card's busted. I mean, like, it could be... It's probably not going to be more broken. It could be more broken than that's what we reroll into. But that's the, that's, that's the risk I run just from having this reroll method. Um, we're going to have some things that have really, really high power level, potentially. As common as an aardvark, more difficult to find than a unicorn. That's actually really interesting. Like, they're very, very common, but they're really hard to find. That's a cool concept. I guess that's like bugs. You know what I mean? There are bugs everywhere, and I, I, I don't see them. I'm going to re-roll this. Hopefully it's not even more broken. Also, hopefully it's not super, super boring. Coffin Dispenser is a one-mana artifact tap, add, black, or red. We've already seen this exact effect on a different card. This is just better. Fine. You think you need one less headstone. Ixalan Navigator. I think you need one less headstone. Sorry, my mistake. Ravager Eel is a 4-mana, four 4-3 four, black beast. The new race of Ravagers looks like their prey. It isn't the best camouflage. This is a 4-mana, four 4-3. Four, it's not good. We could do better. Sorry. We could do worse, though. Like, it is... It is very possible to do worse than this. It is almost passing the vanilla. <laughs> All right, let's just let's just reroll this. I'm gonna reroll it, but whoo, this could be this could be a lot worse. It could be a four mana two two. All right, crew cut shankle is a four mana two two black zombie pirate. Whenever crew cut shankle deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. Okay, interesting. So this card is. Very similar to the card we saw earlier. That card was 5 mana though. So this comes down a turn earlier, which is relevant. But it also needs to connect. I believe that the other one, it attacks, it gets blocked, it dies, but it still got you a token. Right, I, yeah, 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 token. Here you have to actually get through and hit your opponent. Which is not good, but it's not terrible either because that's that's the situation you want when you're attacking with something like this anyway and it's a zombie pirate remember to take your silver with you blighted aether is a four mana one one black shade tap blighted aether deals one damage to any target tap target creature gets minus two minus two until on the turn huh four mana for a one one is pretty bad minus two minus two repeatedly for tapping it it's pretty good. I mean, this thing easily dies to, like, its own effect, honestly. Um, and it's a creature, so it has to stick on the board for a full turn before you could even start using it. But it's pretty decent afterwards. Probably too slow. Let's look at the art. I think I'm going to re-roll it. I think that we can do something more interesting than this, even if this is, like, not bad. This, this, this is probably, probably decent. Ugro's Marauders. That's a great name. I love a card that refers to a legendary thing without being legendary. Very fun. Four mana, black, three, two, goblin pirate. At the beginning of each upkeep, if you control fewer creatures than each opponent, create a treasure token. Oh, that's a fun mechanic. Like, I want to have less creature. I, I want to not go wide. I want to go tall. 
and I can help myself do that by ramping into my big things because I'm making treasure tokens. This card's cool. I like this one. They will have to fight through wave after wave of swarthy Gomjabari. What? That's great. <laughs> Curse of Opulence, that's a real card, is a three mana black instant. Destroy target non-artifact, non-black creature, it can't be regenerated. We can do better than this. Not only is this the name of a real spell, um, it's just like... it's. I mean, other than it, it can't be regenerated, which is potentially useful in the right meta... This is just, like, worse than a murder. I, I don't know. A particularly heinous curse may be bought, but there's always a price to pay. I mean, I don't know. I have a hard time actually doing it, because in Limited, you just need removal so badly. Like, you, I, I, I would 100% run this. Are you kidding? It'd be fine. But I'm not excited about it. Let's try it. We, we can do better. We can do better. Reap the Tides is a 3-mana instant. Return two target creatures to their owner's hand. Storm. When you cast this spell, copy it for each spell cast before it. This turn, you may choose new targets for the copies. That is the correct reminder text for Storm. Um, I kind of love this. It It's definitely a blue card and not a black card, but... Yeah. Instead of killing things, we're bouncing them. But if we have Storm, we could bounce four, or six, or whatever. It does say two target creatures to the owner's hands. It's not up to two. So if we, like, if my opponent has three creatures, I can bounce two of them with one copy of Storm. If I target one of the first copies, then it'll, like, fizzle because... It won't have a target when that one goes returns the hand. So I'd have to target, like, an opponent's creature and, like, maybe one of my own or something. So it has a little bit of wishy-washiness. Like, or, like, not wishy-washy, but, like, there's some hoops to jump through for this card more than it looks like, which is a little bit annoying. But otherwise, cool. This is probably a worse removal spell than the one we rolled past, but it is a more interesting one. The mindless waters tear down the things built on land. Cool. Trounce Tactics is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two black goblin rogue. When Trounce Tactics enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. It's an artifact with tap, sacrifice, add one mana. Trounce Tactics can't attack unless defending player controls an artifact. Huh. Three mana, ETB, make a token, so it's kind of like a two mana 2-2, two -two. so it's just kind of breaking even, honestly. I mean, it is nice, because you can say, okay, cool, on turn three, I'm going to play this, I get a token, and now on turn four, I'm actually going to be able to play a five cost thing. Like, there is value in it, it's not just a two mana 2-2, two -two. so I'm okay with that. But then it has a downside? Weird? It goes to treasure or nowhere. I think I'm going to keep it. Like, it's not super exciting, but, like, it does seem like a pretty reasonable, like, just kind of common creature. It gives you a treasure. There might be treasure synergies. It can't attack unless your opponent has artifacts, which is sometimes just not going to be relevant. And other times, that's fine. You block with it. Who cares? It's not supposed to be aggro. I, I do like the idea of a card that says, I am not aggro. I am going to be a body. And I'm going to do everything you want to do except for attack because we're not aggro. We're making a token so you can ramp into some big cool thing. Don't even worry about it. Like, sure. Sure. Maybe it doesn't need to have that drawback for its power. But it has it to indicate to you, I'm not aggro. Put me in your, your mid-range or your control deck. Come on. Which, yeah, works for me. Works for me. Keening Wrecker. We already saw a ke another Keening card. That's cool. Some consistency in the naming convention. Maybe Keening isn't just a word. It is, like, a faction or something. 
Keening Wrecker is a 2 mana 2 1 blue zombie pirate with raid. This time, raid means when Keening Wrecker enters the battlefield, return a blue or black creature you control to its owner's hand. Wow, that's bad! This is just a 2 mana 2 1 that bounces itself if you don't have another blue or black creature. Now, if you did want to repeat an ETB, it's potential that this downside's an upside, but make it like a 3 3 or something. You know what I mean? Like, like at least, since most of the time it's a downside, you might as well make it like a good stat. Yeah. No matter where he roams, no one can stand against the thunderous boom of his mace. I'm re rolling it. This is my one reroll for the card. Let's see what we get. Fif Fif Fiflian Learners is a 2 mana 1 1 blue Merfolk Scout. Flash. Fiflian Learners can't be blocked. Okay. I mean, that card's actually pretty cool. You can flash it in as a blocker, you can uh, have it just as an unblockable guy. 2 mana, 1-1 one, one unblockable? I'm into that, that's fun. Sure, yeah. Why not? Fifthly in society prizes swiftness above all else. The first order of business is a quick, discreet death. Oh, merfolks are weird. Haunted Raid is a 3-mana blue enchantment. Haunted Raid enters the battlefield tapped. Whenever you cast a spell from your hand, scry 1. Look at the top card of your library. You may put it on the bottom of your library. Um, huh. 3-mana for this effect. The fact that it enters the tapped is 100% irrelevant. It doesn't tap for anything, so whatever. Whenever you cast a spell from your hand, scry 1. Scrying is useful. Like, scrying is useful. I guess here's the thing, right? If you had a spell that said three mana, every time you cast a spell, draw a card, I'd go, holy crap, that's really good. Three mana for that effect, that's busted. And people often value, quote unquote, a scrying as being half of a draw. It's drawing half of a card effectively. So, okay, three mana, every time you cast a spell, draw half a card. When you say it that way, that seems pretty good still. I think this card's probably okay. It's cheap enough that it's not such a big deal that you're spending three mana just to get it into play. I think it works. Every house is haunted by the fear of losing its most prized possession. Morimoto's Assassin is a three mana, two, two, green elf assassin. Whenever he... Whenever he... Whenever Morimoto's Assassin deals combat damage to a player, if you control a Lumbering Spy, which you won't, uh, Morimoto's Assassin gets plus one plus one to one of turn. This is useless. Wow, what a cool card that is completely pointless. Let's break it down. Three mana, two, two. Not a great stat line. When it deals combat damage to a player... Get plus one, plus one. You've already dealt damage to the player. What do you care about being a 3-3 now? The fight's over. Third of all, it's if you control a Lumbering Spy. Not a card named Lumbering Spy. If there is a card in the set called Lumbering Spy, that doesn't actually fulfill this condition. Not that there would be anyway, but let's ignore that part. Because it would need to have the creature type Lumbering Spy. Because when you say a Lumbering Spy, that's like saying a Goblin, right? Like... It, it refers to creature type. This card's just a mess. You could go by night and lie in ambush. Or you could take a shortcut. Lana, merchant adventure. But, unless I'm 100% forgotten and I just like blacked out for a second. We haven't re-rolled this card yet, I don't think. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But I guess it'll be too late, so maybe don't bother. But... This is a functional card. It's useless, but it's functional. So this is not a free reroll. This is the one. Let's see what we get. Yoramanya Breaker 
is a three mana two two green human rogue tap destroy target creature. That's pretty good. That's pretty good card right there. Um, as we've mentioned before, you know it seems really strong, but you do have to like untap with it, right? Like it it has summoning sickness. You can't just blow things up instant speed with this spell. You got to put into play. Your opponent has to not remove it, and then you can start blowing up something every turn but if you stick this this card is terrifying the sugar and spice of oramania were stolen to find his next robbery okay great drown yard bridge is a land drown yard bridge enters the battlefield tap tap add red add white <laughs> boring I don't remember if we've been keeping lands this boring or not. I think I'm going to re-roll this. It's just a normal tap land. Like, there's just, it's just, there's just nothing going on. Ores can't float the locks in a storm. Spire Garden is a land. Tap, add red or green. Well, at least it doesn't enter the battlefield with tapped. Um... This is just better than most non-basic lands, but... Oh well. The Yawgmoth... Yep. The Yawgmoth continued to turn his settlers' holdings into havens. A series of teeming jungles were they... where they could live free from his control. What? Sure. Spire Garden makes red... Makes green. I kind of like that as a name, because, like, spires are, like, mountains and gardens are, like, forests. It's cool. I like it, actually. I don't have anything to say about this card, though. It's just a land. Carnage Arachnus is a 4-mana, 2-2 two, two, green spider. For generic and green, Carnage Arachnus gets plus 2, plus 2, and gains trample. This is a very weird spider. Doesn't have... I'm going to re-roll it. It's just boring. Like, if this had, like, reach, that'd be something. Because it's a spider. But I'm just going to re-roll this. It could be a lot worse. But I'm just not. I don't care. Every fourth or fifth Arachnus appears with a different design. Wow. They're like collectibles. Birch Crown All-Arounder is a 4-mana 2-4... Green tree folk with protection from each creature type. Huh. That's such a weird way of saying that. It's not protection from creature creatures. Weird how I stumbled on that word. Which means a few things, right? So if you had a creature with no creature type, like, for example, um, a morph. Morphs are a type of creature. Um, they're not really a type of creature at all. That's the whole point, is that there are some cards that have the keyword morph, which means you can play it face down, and it is, like, a 3-3, I think. Maybe it's a 2-2. I think it's a 3-3. And they are, they have no color and they have no type. They're just a creature. So, this would not... This would not be protected from that, because it doesn't have the creature type at all. So that's an interesting. Second of all, I think tribal spells would count. So tribal is a, uh, a super type. Super types are like basic lands or legendary creatures, right? Like that thing that goes before the type is a, is a super type. And tribal is a super type that simply denotes that this card isn't a creature but still has a creature type and i believe and i could be wrong but i believe that even though that that creature type is attached to a non-creature card it still counts as a creature type it doesn't become like a tribal type or anything i could be mistaken maybe, maybe that doesn't count as a creature type but i believe it would so if you had for example um what like crib swap i guess is the one i'm thinking of which is like a an, like an instant speed probably instant, maybe it's sorcery whatever it like exiles a creature and replaces it with a changeling like a like a shapeshifter with all creature types um but crypto itself has the the creature type 
like shapeshifter on it, I think. I could be 100% wrong about this. That might be a bad example. But you understand what I'm saying, even if I'm getting the details wrong. I believe this would be protected from that. Even though that card's not a creature, it does have creature types. What a weird birch crown all-arounder. All-arounder is such a funny term. Um, this card's cool. It's a, like a, a, a four mana two four that's unblockable. The, the short version is that it's a four mana two four that's unblockable. And that's already pretty good. I think that's okay. Maybe not amazing. Four mana is a lot, but yeah. I like it, and I like tree folk. Birch crown all-arounder loved living among the orcish hordes and their care for his family and clan. Now that they've become scattered and overrun, she longs to bring them back together. Um. Okay, cool. Nice, great. I don't know why I... Okay, cool. Dathic the Bloodthirsty is a... Wow. That's a... Why, why does this card cost so much? It must have like a discount in its original form or something, right? It's a 9 mana, red, green, and white, 7-6 cat warrior. It's a legendary creature. I skipped that part. It has haste, and Dothic the Bloodthirsty attacks each combat of Fable. This is weird. 9 mana... For a 7-6 with haste. Well, this is one of those situations, again, that we're getting into a could be worse. The AI is not great at making very expensive cards. And this, I mean, it's it's not great, but if your opponent's got 7 life and no blockers, it's got haste. That's pretty cool. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to go for the biscuit. Dathic was a great warrior among the Shadow. His ferocity matched only by his loyalty to the Rath... Rathskel. Hmm. This is our one reroll. Let's make it count. Grim Snapper Leviathan. Okay, same mana cost. Because it has to be. That's predefined. But same, same, same like power. 7-6. It's not worse, at least, from that standpoint. So that's good. Grim Snapper Leviathan, 9 mana, red, green, white, 7, 6, legendary creature Leviathan. Cool, I like a Leviathan. It's got Death Touch and Trample. So it doesn't have Haste, but it does have Trample, which is good, because oftentimes having big stats isn't a big deal because people just chump block and it doesn't really do much. Grime Tainted Bounty Hunter. It's an ability word that this has, which means at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control no creatures, sacrifice Grim Snapper Leviathan. That is 100% irrelevant because Grim Snapper Leviathan is a creature. This card is just a 9 mana 7 6 with Death Touch and Trample. It's not interesting. I think it is probably like a more interesting card than it just having haste. But arguably just having haste is a better effect because you can actually do something with it the turn it comes into the battlefield. It's not just a big old thing. Still, this is what we got. As Leviathan, that's fun for like flavor and lore purposes. For the Sinistrals, killing was as simple as collecting the bounty. Grime tainted bounty hunter. What is going what is that? Like, is there flavor going on there? Jacob Frey is a 8 mana, white, 6-6, six, six, legendary creature, human pirate. It's like, that's like a surprisingly good pirate name. It's like, not over the top, it's just like, I'm just a guy. My name's Jacob Frey, and I'm like, I believe that. As long as Jacob Frey isn't in your opening hand, creatures you control have first strike. Um... Wow, I don't know what that means. I don't actually know how to parse this. Does this just mean that your 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 creatures always have first strike because this effect only applies while it's on the battlefield, which means it's not in your hand? Even if it was in your opening hand, it just says isn't in your opening hand. Or do you define your opening hand at the beginning of the game? 
and then that becomes your opening hand for the rest of the game. Does this effect apply all the time? Like, just as long? Or is it only while it's on the battlefield, right? There's this assumed text of, you know, all abilities on a card refer to while this card is on the battlefield, the following apply, right? Like, that is assumed. Except for certain cards, uh, certain abilities, like, um, return this from the battlefield to the, to, to, return this from the graveyard to the battlefield. Those effects, even though they are activated abilities on a card, are assumed to be available when you have them in your graveyard. Right? I don't know. It's weird. So, um, let's assess it just assuming, I don't know, that you just always have first strike when this is on the battlefield. That's an 8-mana 6-6 six, six that gives your board first strike. That's pretty okay. I think that's probably pretty good. 6-mana, uh, sorry, 8-mana is a lot of mana. But that's not going to change. No matter how much we re-roll re this card, it's always going to be 8-mana unless the AI decides to give it a discount. The AI needs to learn how to give cards discounts. That's what I've learned. But... I can't confirm how this works. This card might not be fundamentally broken, according to our rules for re-rolling. It might not be. But I don't know how it works, so I'm going to count this as a free re-roll. Ramira Shielded Captain is an 8-mana 3-3? Three, three? That's so small. 8 mana, 3-3, three, three, Legendary Creature, Angel Warrior. It has flying for 2 mana, generic and white. Create a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying named Ramira Shielded Captain. Huh. So, uh, weirdly enough, I've seen this effect on cards before with the AI where they say make a token with the same name as the thing that made the token. And it's like, I don't know why you did that, but okay, interesting flavor right army of the selves but i mean cool like two mana make a one with flying is that's decent i think so if we don't think of this as an eight mana three three and we instead think of it as like you know overhead to then start churning these things out i mean you play this for eight mana if you don't die immediately the next turn you can just make I guess like four one ones. That's not as impressive as I was hoping. Yeah, I'm gonna not. I'm gonna I'm gonna use my 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 reroll on this one. It wasn't long before she and her men were causing trouble in the heart of the Grand Abbas of Luskan. Come on! Oh, we got ourselves a pirate. This has got to be good, right? Kalitaz, the Blood Chief. An 8 mana, 5, 6, white, legendary creature, human, pirate with first strike, and other pirates you control get plus 1, plus 1, and have first strike. Okay. So, if we assume that the original card we saw, our, whatever their name was, Jacob Frey, um, they're a pirate that maybe gave everything first strike, not 100% sure. This is way more interesting than that. It gives itself first strike and all other pirates first strike, but also everything gets plus one plus one. So it is more narrow because it only affects pirates, but that is way more interesting than affecting everything because it encourages you to build a pirate deck. Love it. Great. Good. It's a 5-6, which isn't bad. It's not as good as a 6-6, six, six, which I believe Jacob Frey was, but it'll do. I clapped way too many times in that excitement there, but... I'm into it. Still probably too expensive, but you can't really do anything about that. I like it. We got there. I'm calling this done. And that brings us to the end. That is the last card in the founding of Ixalan's Pirates. And I think it came up pretty good. We got a lot of cards that care about pirates. We got a lot of pirates themselves. Maybe there's not a good enough mix of like all the staples that a set needs. Is there ramp and grain? Is there removal in black? I don't know. We might not have got there. But... For a nice small, like, 200-ish card set, didn't take too long. Still longer than I meant to, but oh well. Next, uh, we're going to be putting out a gameplay video. Probably sealed, I'm thinking. We haven't done sealed in a bit. It's nice, it's snappy, it's fast. Love it.
after that, we will be moving into a new project, as expected. So, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you then. Have a good night.